G'day viewers, my name is Jason. I own Joondalup Electrical Services and I've been in the solar industry since 2008. I supply and install grid connect and off-grid solar systems. I'm doing this particular video as I've often said that transformerless and high frequency inverters such as SIG Energy, SunSync, Day, Fusion and GrowWatt are not suitable for off-grid. This often attracts strong opinions against what I'm saying in the comments of my videos. I've been asked many times to explain my opinion, so here it is, I'm finally doing it. So this video is on transformerless uh, inverters such as the SIG Energy product versus transformer based um, inverters which are traditionally used um, for off-grid. Um, but as with technology advancing and um, in particular the SIG Energy product coming onto the market, it has been a good solution for many a salesperson to offer as an off-grid application. Um, now, just uh, when, when you do your solar accreditation, you've got the grid connect, you've got the battery. Uh, connected to the grid and you've got standalone. So standalone is a separate accreditation um, and it's a separate accreditation because there is lots of things to consider when you are designing and installing a standalone or off-grid power supply. Um, this video I am going to read from a script which I've done. I've spent a fair bit of time writing this because I really wanted to choose my words carefully and hopefully it comes across the way I want it to come across. Um, instead of me just winging it like I do in most of my videos because I am a tradie, I'm up on the roof, I'm fixing systems, I'm installing systems and I'm just a tradie making videos and giving my opinion on uh, all things solar and battery. So here it is, I'm going to read the um, script that I've written and um, see how we go. So for me as a business in Australia, the best solutions are Victron, Selectronic and SMA. Now I'm not saying the others can't do off-grid, of course they can, but should you? For me as a business, supplying these systems to farmers, busy homes, etc, definitely not. But for others, it may be a suitable product as there are pros and cons for both sides, which I'm going to try and talk about. My experience in the off-grid off industry has taught me that a transformerless inverter is not ideal for off-grid. I have seen many transformerless failures over the years as systems have failed or simply not been up to task leaving people disappointed and ultimately spending more money on a second system um, that is fit for purpose. So that'll be either ripping the whole lot out and starting again, or as I'm doing on another job in lower chittering at the moment, pulling out a sun sink inverter and putting in a selectronic inverter um, with a Fronius um, string inverter. For me running a business, when I supply and install an off-grid system, I am now their power company. As such, any failures don't sit well with my clients. It's a massive inconvenience for them and it costs me money due to site visits and time wasted. With that in mind, I need to use quality equipment that is fit for purpose and can, del and can deliver a minimum of 10 years of trouble-free service. No load drops, no weird shit, and no hassle. I have mentioned the SIG Energy product a fair bit as it has become very popular in the off-grid popular in the off-grid sector. Now, no, now I'm not saying it can't do off-grid, I'm saying if you have clients that want a reliable, durable, robust power supply that is simple in functionality, it's probably not the best choice. I do see why people use SIG Energy. It's very easy to install being an all-in-one solution. It's very fast to install compared to a traditional off-grid system and it's priced very well, especially when compared to a traditional off-grid system. Let's compare 5 kilowatt single phase SIG energy inverter versus a Selectronic, an Australian made transformer based inverter built for off-grid applications and has been around since 1964, that's 61 years. SIG energy was established in 2022, that's three years. So let's look at some comparisons for the 5 kilowatt single phase inverters. The surge capacity of a SIG Energy is 
7.5 kilowatts for 10 seconds. So their five kilowatt inverter, single phase, can handle a surge of seven and a half kilowatts for 10 seconds. So that is if you've got, you know, loads starting up such as motors, um, air conditioners, things like that. That's, that's your surge, that's how much it can cope with as a surge of power. The Selectronic is 12 kilowatts for 30 seconds. So I'll say it again, surge capacity for SIG Energy is 7.5 kilowatts for 10 seconds for their 5 kilowatt inverter. Selectronic is 12 kilowatts for 30 seconds for their 5 kilowatt inverter. It's a huge difference. This is due to Selectronic being transformer based. In addition, if your SIG Energy inverter has no communication with the monitoring platform, it will derate. I'm going to read you an, a uh, post that was put up in the SIG Energy installers group from Will Hall, who is the uh, general manager, I think that's his title, in Australia. So, after extensive discussions with HQ, we are going to be implementing some positive changes to our internet connectivity requirements as requested by you, our customers. Please see summary of updates below. These new changes will be activated when their excellent MySigen 3 app update goes live later this week. So, those changes will be, in scenarios where the system is not connected to the internet for a long period of time, more than 90 days, we will change our operation strategy for our all-in-one systems which previously disabled the energy storage function and allowed the customer to use only the pure voltaic, pure photovoltaic power generation function. So what he's saying there is if it was offline for more than 90 days, the battery storage side of it would shut down and only the string inverter would work. That's for a grid connected system. Now we will allow, now we will allow customers to use this energy storage function while ensuring the system safety and customers can continue to charge and discharge. Charging and discharging speed performance will be slightly limited but it will not be significant for customers. Limitations may be greater when the op operating environment is very poor. So what he's saying there is if it's hot, if it's hot it's going to derate even more. The short term overload function cannot be supported in the case of long time offline scenarios. So the 7.5 kilowatts that I just mentioned for the 5 kilowatt inverter is not available in this scenario now. I'll read that again. The short term overload function cannot be supported in the case of long, -time, long term offline scenarios. <coughs> Excuse me and the cutoff state of charge will be appropriately adjusted to prevent battery damage caused by customers leaving the battery unattended for a long period of time. So the, the surge rating is getting reduced if it's offline for more than 90 days and the cutoff state of charge will be raised so you won't be able to use all of the capacity of your battery. Now I'm kind of making the thing about these points because quite often in off-grid scenarios in the middle of the outback and that sort of thing, you don't have cellular signal and if their modem craps out or whatever, it's not unusual for off-grid systems to go offline. Once the system's working and they're familiar with it, they tend just to forget about it and that's how it should be. Um, the systems I design and build, you can just forget about them. Everything is set to be automated and operate as it should. All adjustments are made to ensure that the customer systems can run safely when offline while retaining the customer's charging and discharging functions. So they're saying, basically saying there that they're derating it um, to ensure that it's operating more safely when it's not being monitored. Um, because uh, it, it is a condition of the warranty, which I'll get into, that the SIG Energy product is connected to the monitoring platform. Alright, I'll go back to my script. 
Let's keep in mind that a 15 kilowatt three phase SIG energy inverter is only five kilowatts per phase and that's without any derating. It's imperative that you spread your loads very carefully. So that massive 15 kilowatt three phase inverter, which a lot of people are doing because they think, oh wow, great, three phase. It's five kilowatts single phase for a 15 kilowatt three phase inverter before it's derated. So if now it's derated because it's hot, it's offline. I don't know where the actual figures are, but let's say it's three and a half kilowatts. It's really gonna take absolutely fuck all to trip that inverter over three and a half kilowatts and potentially shut it down. So you think, and this is what I, I had with this SunSync one that I'm pulling out at the moment, you think you're getting a great big inverter but you when you break it down you're actually not so these are all things that you need to consider um, again having three phase is very attractive to people because if you want a three phase traditional off-grid system whether it's SMA Selectronic or Victron you actually need three inverters and they are all joined together so the expense really does become quite significant. So it's very easy to look at these three phase transformerless inverters and think, you beauty, let's go with that. Now what I offer as a solution, and, and this is not in any way promoting my business, I couldn't give a shit whether you call me for, I shouldn't say that, it sounds terrible. I'm not trying to promote myself, I'm merely stating the facts as I see with my experience in the of off-grid industry. If you want an off-grid system, I can supply and install you one, no problem. But that's not what this video is for, okay? I'm not, this is not a shit on SIG Energy video. This is just explaining my experience and sharing my knowledge with you. So that client that I just mentioned where I've removed their 12 kilowatt SunSync three-phase inverter, there's a video on it. It's, a, it's not a long video, but there's a video on it, and it's one of those videos that I sort of ragged on transformerless inverters and it, it copped a lot of comments. Um, but that's in my playlist there. I'll try and remember to put a, a link in the description. Um, so that client where we've pulled out at 12 kilowatt sun sink, I've literally put everything back to single phase for him and replaced it with a seven and a half kilowatt single phase selectronic. He is absolutely wrapped. The system has not shut down once. He was getting load, dro load drops constantly. They couldn't boil a kettle. Um, there was just so many problems because it's hot out there. And these transformerless inverters can't cope with the heat. In that one little box, you've got the MPPTs and you've got the inverter. There's a lot going on in there. With the traditional off-grid um, systems, You've got your off-grid, your standalone inverter, and then you've typically got either an MPPT if it's DC coupled, or you've got a string inverter separate. Um, it's not an all-in-one little bloody box that's working its ass off trying to do what you want it to do. So he's absolutely over the moon. He can't believe this seven and a half kilowatt electronic inverter is doing what it's doing. Um, he's absolutely wrapped. Um, he was sick of the random shutdowns, and in his words, it was an absolute piece of shit. Um, that was a sun sink inverter, not a SIG energy inverter. Um, but, yeah, same, same. He's over the moon with this electronic product and can't believe how much better it is. The user interface for SIG energy is an app on your phone. An app that you need cellular connectivity for. So if there's no signal, you won't be able to interact with the inverter. If the system is not connected to the monitoring platform, you may also void your warranty. Tesla is the same on that subject, however, Tesla has its own inbuilt SIM card for communication. It's not dependent on your Wi-Fi network. Now, it is possible to communicate with the SIG Energy system via your local Wi-Fi or your LAN network if it's got an Ethernet cable. However, guess what happens when your power goes off? Your modem switches off which means you lose communication with the SIG Energy system. You can connect directly to the system in some cases, but it is complex and it's hit and miss. And it's definitely not something a busy farmer that hates technology will particularly want to persevere with at 8pm in the evening. 
So guess who will be getting a series of angry phone calls demanding you fix it now? The installer or the retailer? I know this because I've been there. This is my life. This is what I do. Security issues with the app such as privacy, etc. I'm not saying there are issues, but many of my clients live off grid as they want to be removed from society in general and are not very trusting of such platforms, especially those that communicate with overseas cloud-based servers, etc. The Energy app is very clever and it has a lot of parameters that the end user can change. And again, that's not really ideal for a Luddite farmer. The Selectronic Inverter has a panel on the front of the inverter with LED lights showing what is happening and buttons you can press. It is easy to operate once set up and is quite foolproof. It also comes with a chart explaining the buttons and LEDs. I laminate this chart and I fix it in place next to the inverter. That way farmers etc can work out what's going on and rectify any issues themselves. Although this is a rare scenario in a correctly set up plant. Black start is essential and more importantly automatic black start. So what black start means is if the system shuts down because the batteries have gotten too low um, it will shut down completely but it's really important that the system starts back up by itself because you don't want to discover that your power's gone off 12 hours later when all your food's spoilt or worse, even worse you've been away for two three weeks. Damn, it's hot in here. The SIG Energy product needs human intervention to be brought back out of a shutdown scenario due to low state of charge via the app. A proper off-grid system with Victron or Selectronic and DC coupled solar will black start without human intervention. However, a correctly set up off-grid system would include a correctly set up auto start backup generator, so shutdowns should never actually happen. As a side note, I'm a firm believer that all off-grid systems need a solid generator that is set up correctly with auto start and, and that is maintained regularly. The installer interface for parameter changes and detailed analysis is readily available for Selectronic and Victron. I can diagnose and make changes from my desktop, which is vitally important. It saves me a trip to site, which for me can be a day's drive. With Sig Energy, if it shuts down and there is no explanation, you are at the mercy of tech support, which of course is only available during work hours and I imagine will only deal with the installer and the installer will be, will be required to be on site. If there is a simple glitch, the system may shut down with no reason. There is no redundancy. You can't isolate a faulty battery or component, for example. It's simply off until the component can be replaced. As a business, you only need a few troublesome off-grid systems and it will be a massive drain on your business's financial situation. Days upon days can be very, very easily lost running back and forth to site. Now this is not a shit on SIG Energy video as I have said and all, transform and all other transformless inverters. I actually like the SIG Energy product and I have supplied and installed a few of them to date. I will also say that if you are a tech kind of person that likes to persevere with techy type things then maybe having SIG Energy for an off-grid system is a good fit for you. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. I appreciate you watching. Thank you.